I'm sure all of us have seen at least one YouTube weepy. What am I talking about? It's that YouTube video that's particularly designed to make you cry. You know the whole like cutting onions videos, right? Not that somebody's cutting onions in a video, but after you, it's like, you must, somebody must have been cutting onions because I'm crying. One of those are these adoption reveals. Have you seen those? Where a child will open up a gift like on Christmas or their birthday, and inside is an adoption certificate, you know, that, the, that, that one of the parents or like a step-parent is adopting a child. And of course, you know, once they realize, like, oh my God, you know, all this tears, right? And all of this. Um, because it's a very emotional moment, isn't it, to feel connected to something so powerful as a family? Wouldn't you say? It's so, so, um, it hits at such a core element of who we are when we feel that the group of people with whom we are connected are so much more than just happen to be the people who are at the same place at the same time. It changes a house into a home. It changes a workplace into a, a community of people gathered for a mission, doesn't it? And I think that's what we want to try to form here at the ACC, is to try to create a sense of that family. Uh, not the family like, oh yeah, we gotta pick, you know, we've gotta put up with Uncle Joe again. No, but the whole sense of family by saying that these people are connected to me in a way that's much deeper than simply the fact that we work in the same location. But that, of course, brings all kinds of things with it. But one of the things I think St. Joseph can teach us, which is such a, a beautiful lesson for us today, is Joseph's just complete uh, desire to please God in the role that he had been given. You know, we hear this person of Joseph, we don't know very much about him at all. But we do know that when everything about his society and what he had learned growing up about what he should do in a situation like this, and God said, no, I need you to do something different. He listened to God. He responded to God's invitation. And someone would say, but Father, who would not listen to God? Well, I think we've got lots of examples where somebody could have listened to the voice of God but decided to put their faith in something else. And it usually turned out pretty, uh, pretty poor on the other end. But Joseph teaches us to take that invitation and to be, to be joyful of it and to do only what God is asking, not what we think is the, that, that we should be doing. What did I mean? In this scene here in the gospel, Jesus says, after his mother says, your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. Jesus says, I'm in my father's house. Now, a lot of guys would take a lot of difficulty with that. Who are you talking about? I'm your father, you know, this whole business. But Joseph understands his role, and he's not diminished by this at all. He understands that he's part of something even greater. How can we do our ministry with the same kind of passion and joy, the same degree of dedication, and not be overturned or not be upset or anxious about others around us doing work that's either similar or part of what we're doing? How do we focus on what we've been given as a gift for joy? And recognizing that God has adopted all of us to be his children, and each one of us has a value that goes far beyond what sort of tasks we can perform, what sort of gifts or talents or skills we have. Just as in a family, the family member's value comes not from what they do, but from who they are. And we, our value comes from God desiring to name us as sons and daughters. Can we not rejoice in that? Can we not rejoice in the part that we have been given in the mission of Christ? and joyfully perform that along with each other to bring about the kingdom of God. Is that not what we are about? Not how much I can advance my own position. Not how much I might show everybody just how I'm all that in a bag of chips. But to really build up the kingdom of God. And when it was time for Joseph to finish his work and to complete it, he went home happy. That's why St. Joseph is the patron of a happy death. He did what God had asked, and when he was done, God called him home. There's no more we can ask about it from that. So, as we spend this day with St. Joseph, let's learn how we might imitate some of his values and bring about the kingdom of God with joy 